Hi, y'all. So I am going to be doing a quick lesson on Grandma Moses, and you have um, a link to all of the readings about her. So I'm not going to go too much into that information because that's going to be information that you can get written down. Um, I might read that information on another little slide for you, but basically right now what I want to do with this video is kind of break down the elements of her paintings and how she brings things together. So obviously her emphasis is going to be on um, the farmlands and just that rural, beautiful like landscape. So when you look at her work, you'll see that she has like layers. So it'll be like in the far background, oh, the sky. And then she'll have another layer that's a little bit closer. And they're all scenes of things that are happening. And when you look at them, there's little tiny treasures in there that you can find. So what I'd like for you guys to do as your prompt is to think about all the beautiful places you guys have been exploring um, and think about all the places that you want to explore. Think about all the stories you want to tell and kind of come up with a little story that you can create for the place you are now and for the landscape you want to create now. So for instance, if you have um, people playing or people, you know, getting milk from their cows or like one of her scenes that I really loved was like um, a train collision, which is like obviously so horrific and sad, but the way she like drew it made it very interesting. And so things that are maybe unexpected could also present themselves um, in your landscape. So think about that, brainstorm that, and then I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna start sketching with you guys, um, just kind of a simple outline of how to build those layers so that we can create a composition. So that's a really fun vocab word that I want you guys to remember. Um, obviously you guys might have experience with some of the vocab words, maybe not, but like I want you to learn new ones. And so that's one of the ones I want you to learn. So composition is really important specifically for her because of the way she composes or creates her scenes of each landscape. So you'll have a sky, which is very, very small. I think for most of her work, um, at least the examples I'm gonna show you, it's like, small sky but still beautiful still important it's not neglected it's there it's present but then the majority of the canvas or the um painting or like wherever whatever you're gonna use i'm gonna suggest doing uh watercolors markers crayons something like that but anyway that majority of that space is actually mostly landscape and it's mostly farmlands so you'll see rolling hills so some of the places that you've been maybe they're flat areas maybe they have a lot of mountains I mean, we've been to a lot of places and so we've got a lot of examples and varieties to choose from, but try to think about how you could create your ideal landscape and like what that will look like for you. And we're going to do that by creating many layers. So they're kind of going to go over and over and back and forth. And then we're going to fill those in from back to front and we're going to kind of sketch out our ideas. So I'm going to show you that on my paper and I'm going to have you guys do the same project and kind of follow along. But that's kind of my intro for her. And then I'm gonna give you that reading so you guys can just kind of check off all those boxes and like what other information you would wanna know about her. Thank you for listening. Hi friends. Okay, so I wanted to kind of read some of the really cool facts that I learned about Grandma Moses as I was putting this lesson together. So she was born um, in September 7th of 1860. So the 1800s, mid 1800s. She passed away December 13th of 1961. So she was able to see and live up to modern times through the 60s um, when we had things like telephones and trains and things like that. Um, in her work, she often omitted or did not include modern life, even though that's when she started painting. So a lot of her work was about her life that she experienced or remembered from a younger age. Um, and so, I'm going to uh, show you some examples of her work and I'll link those, but I also wanted to read one of my favorite quotes about her early life. Um, one of the favorite things that I read was that um, when she was younger, her dad would buy her or like give them paper, the kids paper. And let me see what she wrote exactly so I could say it just perfectly. It says, he liked to see us draw pictures. It was a penny sheet and lasted longer than candy. So if you think about now and today, like you could go to the store and get a candy bar, or maybe you get really good art supplies and you can get that really nice pencil or that really nice crayon or whatever it is. And it lasts longer than the candy did. So kind of just like that, it's kind of a deeper level of interest to me because it's like, okay, yeah, you have this thing that you could just eat and consume right away. And that was a really yummy candy, right? Or you could create something that lasts for so much longer. And so I thought that was a really beautiful quote. So. Anyway, that was a nice thing that I read about her. Um, most of her stuff was painted of rural life from her earlier days. 
and she didn't start paying until she was much older very old much older than both of us so um she started painting i'm gonna find the exact date and time so that i can be accurately quoted on this it says she began painting in the earnest age of 78 so it's a little like 78 years old that's when she started you guys we have 78 years 78 years that's how old she was so think about how many years you have now and how your artwork could be if you started now versus when she started 78 and she still made a ton of art so um that's just like some of the interesting things that i learned about her when i was researching her so i would love to hear what you guys learned and if you want to share that with me you can um tell me when we do our live check-ins or you could always email me something like that but i would love to know your favorite facts about her see you guys later so one of the things that I really liked about her work is if you see, she always has these really cool like little rolling, it's kind of hard to see, but so she'll start with like the sky in the background up here and then she'll kind of have it transition to they're kind of far away and then a little bit closer and then a little bit closer and then a little bit closer. So I want you guys to think about what do you want to put in your background? What do you want to put in your back for this landscape? What do you want to do in your mid ground? This is the middle, so the mid ground. And then what do you guys want to add up here? And remember, she's not using modern things. That's going to be up to you guys whether you want to make it a modern version of her work or if you want to keep it classical, um, maybe inspired by what you see here. Wouldn't it be interesting if we were still using a horse and buggy? This is one of her stamps that was created for her. Okay, so these are some of the ones that I thought were interesting to talk about. So this one in particular is this burning corridor. It's a train uh, corridor, so that's like the train tracks. And so it's on fire. And I thought that was so interesting because she still follows her same process where you can see she's got like the sky, she's got the mountains further away, up closer. So that's really interesting to me. Um, and then there's so many more interesting images. So here she is painting. And obviously you guys can find all this information online as well. Okay, so other favorites include this sugaring off, a beautiful world catching the Thanksgiving, the thunderstorm, all of these, the Shenandoah Valley. This one I really love with the sky as well. Here's a more detailed close up of that. And you can see that it's naive art, primitivism. And she's a painter, right? So she's doing these probably in oils. But look at that sky and the trees. So we're still following that same process with the skies then the mountain, then mid-ground, then a little bit closer mid-ground, and then finally the foreground with which has got more of the story happening. Okay, so we're gonna create our sky, and we're gonna just kind of use a small section over here, and I'm gonna do some rolling hills. So this whole top section is gonna be sky. And then we want to create more layers. So we're just going to have, you know, maybe we have some water. So we could have some, this could be mountains. And then maybe there's like a pond over here. This could be water. She likes to do that. And then over here is actually maybe this part will just kind of come up. And this will be a different hill over here. So we'll come back to that. You know, maybe it's like this. This is all one area. This could be one like grassy hill. And then let's say down here, we're going to have maybe like a farmhouse or some more buildings that you might see in a rural area. So those are always going to be like more of like cube shapes. They're going to be basic structures. So we're going to give it a little bit closer to the foreground. So this part of the house is going to be one way. And this could be back here. Maybe this goes back here. So we're going to talk about some shapes. And maybe this part goes up here a little bit higher. Boom, 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 boom. And then can come back down here. And come back down here. And we'll talk about some shapes that you guys can use for your farmhouse, but that's gonna give us kind of a basic shape. And then we're gonna have our windows and our doors. And again, it's primitivism. So it's gonna be pretty simple. Maybe there's like a circle attic situation up here. Definitely needs a fireplace, I would say. And then I also want you guys to think of trees that are important to you too. 
So we're going to have some bigger trees up here. And then the first way we draw trees is that we're going to add on branches. So we're going to submit that tree later. We definitely need a road, right? All of her pieces have roads, so we don't want to forget that. So I'm thinking that my road is going to come up over here to the house and then kind of go off this way. And anything close to us is going to be bigger. So we're going to start with a big open road down here, and then as it gets further away, it's going to get smaller. And then over here, we might have some more trees or hills. And I would suggest drawing this in pencil first to start, but I just grabbed a pen because that's what I had. And then maybe I'm going to save some room down here for some like livestock. I'm not sure yet. Maybe there's more houses on this hill back here or back here. There could be even more houses. So let's see. Maybe we have some houses back here. Can add some back there. We definitely have some trees back here too, right? Like early trees. Something like that. And I think that for this house, I want to have more. Like, hmm. I guess there would be a door here. But this is your chance to kind of play around with it and see what you guys come up with. So the things that I want for you guys to have is the back, the mid, the foreground, the house, and then I'd also like you guys to include some like animals, things like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start to fill in some of these areas. So I definitely want to fill in back here with my, my greens. I know that this whole hill is going to be a super dark green hill. So think about what colors you want for your plants. And if you want any shading. I really want that dark section. And then these areas over here that I started, I want these areas to have layers of color. So I'm going to do some like darker up here. And then some like that. And then this also, this one is going to be darker. Think about like rows of wheat or corn or grains. Like they're going to be growing on different rows. So I'm going to include that. She also includes a lot of um, little like hills or bushes. I'm going to have another green. I'm going to fill in these areas. She often includes people, so I'm going to leave some space to do some people over here. And then for the trees, I think I'm going to do darker trees. If you look at her trees, she usually does pretty dark trees. So I'm going to fill those in with my darker browns. So when I draw trees, I add like little branches. I do like a little, they poke off. Things like that. So you can really use any markers you guys want. I just happen to be using my like kind of nicer ones. Any markers will do. So those first lines I did were called an underdrawing. So that's going to be a pretty basic start to any painting you ever do. You're going to need an underdrawing to get you started. Some people like to do them in pencil. Some people like to do them in uh, like a light brown color. I like to do mine in pencil, but I just happen to do it in pen. But you can really do whatever you want. And the reason I didn't really mind doing it in pen for this particular project is because she does like to go back in and add like little black or dark bold outlines. So that's how I always draw my trees. I kind of start with like the basic shape and then they split and then they split and then they split and then this comes out and then it splits and splits and splits. And then I go back in and add my leaves later. And then, 
So I like to start with like the sky usually, even though I filled some of those in, I'm just trying to get myself grounded and get some things on paper. But I do really like how she incorporates a lot of clouds and like layers into her sky. So I would include that in there as well. Try to think of how you can make the sky really pop. Obviously you're familiar with Arizona sunsets. So those are the most magical, most beautiful sunsets, lots of color. And these more rural areas in the Midwest where she's residing or the East Coast, you're gonna see um, much more subtle skies. Still beautiful, still have their own kind of magic, but we're spoiled here in the desert because we have beautiful sunsets in Phoenix and Arizona. I'm just going to add in some of these like darker sections. And then I'm going to go back in and add some lighter sections. And also think about what time of year you want your project to be in. Is it summer? Is it spring? Is it fall? That's going to affect the sky too. So obviously if you're using regular markers, you're not going to blend as like nicely as these. That's okay. You can also go back over a regular marker with a little bit of uh, water and a paintbrush and you might be able to get it to blend a little bit. That's not really the point. The point is just to get the color on the paper. So obviously you don't want to do a sky. I just want to get mine done. Let's focus on some people. So I really like this sugaring off one. You guys, oh, it's kind of hard to see. There's a lot of people, and it's all winter, so it's kind of going to be different than mine. Mine seems like more of a summer situation. But you can see that all these people, they're very simple. So we're going to do that down here, too. I'm going to have two little friends. Like, so there's a little girl, and she's got a bonnet on. She's going to be sitting next to another little girl with a bonnet on. No faces. You notice they have like, little ovals. And then they have, like, little... Shoulders, shoulders, I'm gonna have them holding hands. Neck, neck, shoulder, shoulder. Arm, arm, jacket, jacket. This can give you a chance to do some like little fun outfits if you really want to practice that as well. I'm gonna have her hold like a watering jug, a pail of water or something. Again, it's primitivism, so you're allowed to make it really simple. I haven't decided if I want these to be boots or shoes or what yet. Hands are a little bit tricky. You don't really need to worry about them. Oftentimes in her paintings, she just has little like bubbles for their hands. And then their faces. It's kind of hard to see them. <sighs> but they'd be wearing basic clothing, right? It's not going to be like modern clothing. So for some of these, you could also use like crayon as well. So I use the marker and the paint and it's for the pen and it's going to be smudging a little bit.